Welcome back to our weekly series of predicting every single NFL game. So we're heading into week 12 here. I cannot believe it. This, this year is flying by. We're already in late November. You guys, you have to appreciate football while you have it. Watch every game you can because we're going to be sitting around pretty soon and there's going to be no football. And I'm going to be really sad when that comes around, but it's coming quick. Um, so we're hit, heading into week 12 here. Uh, my my prediction record on the season right now is one fifteen to fifty eight. Didn't have the greatest week last week. I went nine and five. Um, I was on a bit of a hot streak up into that point, um, but nine and five is not quite what I wanted to have for the week. Obviously, did really good in like the afternoon slate, but as the day went on, there were just a lot of things that I got wrong. Of uh, uh, most notably, the Sunday night game where I went with the Bengals, um, and they almost came back. But Evan McPherson forgot how to play football, and the Chargers held on to that one. So one other quick announcement for the channel is I'm probably not going to be doing the reaction videos anymore, where I would do, like, every week I would do a reaction to all the games. People just don't really care about those videos, and that's fine. Like, I, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I'm, I want to be responsive to the channel. I want to make stuff that you guys actually want to see. And it's clear the reaction videos, people don't really care about them. Uh, they like the prediction videos a lot more. So I'm instead of doing like the, the reaction videos every week, I'm just going to talk about more like hot takes or like big topic issues. Like if coaches get fired or uh, we'll just talk about an individual team in place of doing the reaction weekly. So let's get into the predictions and we kind of you know react to last week's games in the predictions anyways so <clears throat> starting off week 12 we have Thursday night football which I'm recording this on Wednesday but it'll be out tomorrow so it'll be tonight if you're listening to this Thursday my Steelers going to Cleveland to play the bronze um, so before the season started I had the Steelers sweeping the bronze and that was before I even knew how bad the bronze were really going to be but I just didn't think they'd be that good given the quarterback situation. I did not see them being a 2-8 and eight team at this point in the season, but it's clear they're one of the worst teams in the league. The Steelers right now are one of the best teams in the league. Uh, we just beat the Baltimore Ravens without scoring a touchdown. Like To me, people might look at that and say like it's a big indictment on the Steelers. Like It really, and there is definitely some cause for concern there, particularly how, how much our red zone offense stagnated against the Baltimore Ravens last week. <clears throat> but I think it's really, really impressive for the Steelers to beat the Baltimore Ravens without scoring a touchdown. really shows you the grit of the team. It shows you how great the defense really is. Um, for sure, Justin Tucker kind of gifted us this game, but that that just kind of comes along with NFL games. Like, weird shit's going to happen in NFL games. So, I just I look at that as a really big positive. We beat a contending team without scoring a touchdown. Just imagine if our offense was actually on in that game. We would have crushed the Ravens. So for me, at this point in time, I think it would be kind of silly to not consider the Steelers a contending team. Like, we're 4-0 since Russell Wilson took over, and we've back-to-back -back weeks beaten playoff teams with Washington and then Baltimore. So... The Steelers right now, to me, are a full-blown contender. I would You have to rank them over the Ravens right now. They just beat the Ravens. The Ravens are not looking so hot right now. Um, and this gets into a bigger point I could maybe make a video about, is that I just think Todd Munkin, that offensive coordinator, needs to go. Um, if you guys want to see a video on that, I would be happy to break that down. But I just we're getting kind of sidetracked here because this is about the Thursday night game. The Browns, I just I don't really think they have a chance, you know, on one point, it is a divisional game. Anything could happen. But just from a talent perspective, with the momentum of these teams, the Steelers should crush the Browns here. So give me my Steelers. Yeah, that's right. I have not picked against them yet this year. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> I used to say I used to say earlier in the season, I was like, well, I know I'm picking my Steelers every week, but wait till after the bye, I'll start picking against them. Well, <laughs> it's been a couple weeks now. I still haven't picked against them. How can you blame me, though? They're 8-2. and two. Um so moving on now, we have Tampa Bay going to New York to play the Giants. Give me the Buccaneers. Even though the Bucs have their problems, they've really become a disappointing team due to their key injuries to their receivers. The Giants are a fledgling disaster right now. The New York Giants are in competition for the number one overall pick. They just benched Daniel Jones for Tommy DeVito. That's a mess. That is an absolute surefire dumpster fire. And it's not that 
Uh, Daniel Jones was some great quarterback, and I'm like defending him, saying he shouldn't have been benched. But Tommy DeVito, I think, is a better story than he is a better player. <laughs> um, and even with the the key injuries to the the Buccaneers, with Mike Evans and Godwin being out, um, there's rumblings Evans could be back this week, and. I think their offense has actually been pretty capable. Like, they've stayed scrappy without those two guys. They've been competitive in games, especially the emergence of Kate Otten has been really, really good. Um, so, especially if they get Mike Evans back, I still think there's a chance, like, now seeing that Atlanta had back-to-back embarrassing losses, Atlanta in Week 9, or excuse me, in Week 10, lost to the Saints in brutal fashion, and then last week Atlanta lost to... Uh, Denver in embarrassing fashion. I think the Buccaneers actually have a, a slim chance of getting this division. You know, whereas a couple weeks back I was saying it doesn't really matter. Like Atlanta is going to run away with this division just given how Tampa's all banged up injury wise. Well, I don't think so. Like I think Tampa still has a lot to play for. And when you look back to last season, like Tampa had a pretty bad record midway through the year, and then they got really hot at the end of the year. They went on a run. Baker Mayfield played really well, and they they got into the playoffs. They won a playoff game. They were competitive against the Detroit Lions. So I am definitely not writing off the Tampa Bay Buccaneers season, especially with Atlanta kind of crumbling right now. Give me them to beat a bad, bad Giants team. Next up, we have Detroit going to Indy to play the Colts. This should be an absolute slaughtering. The the, the Detroit Lions just hung 52 on the Jacksonville Jaguars last week. And I get it, the Colts are a better team than the Jags, but... This Lions team right now, to me, is the favorite to win the Super Bowl. I don't know how you could have any other team. I mean, if you want to say the Chiefs, fine. I can't really argue that. They're back-to-back champs, all that. But any other team, I cannot see you making a legit argument over the Detroit Lions right now. To me, they have the best on-paper roster. They don't have really any hole on this team right now. They have, I think, arguably the best coaching staff in the NFL when you look at just head coach, Offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. Those three guys are all elite at what they do. They all bring a lot to the table in different ways. Like Dan Campbell's the great motivator, the great leader of men. Ben Johnson on the offensive side, he's like the great schematic guy. And then um, Blanken on their defensive coordinator. I was just watching a thing about them today. That's driving me nuts. But the defensive coordinator has really, really, I think, overachieved and done a great job at developing these young guys, especially the safeties. Brian Branch, Kirby Joseph are now elite-level safeties, whereas just a couple years ago, their secondary was a fucking train wreck, and he has really turned those guys into studs. Um, if you remember the, the the Detroit defensive coordinator, definitely let me know his name down in the comments. I can see his face. I just I can't remember his name right now. Um, <clears throat> that's what happens when you do all this shit off the top of your head. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, give me Detroit here. I get it. The Colts, they beat the Jets. So fucking what? I mean, the Jets are a disaster. Um, I'm going with the the, the Lions here. I don't think anyone is surprised by that. I think there's actually a good shot the Lions don't win another game for the rest of the season. That's how confident I am the Detroit Lions with how they're playing, with how many playmakers they have. Um, Let's see what we got next. A divisional matchup. Titans going to Houston to play the Texans. Now, the Texans have been kind of a weird team. They're 7-4, and four, but I feel like they've been a little disappointing, at least in my opinion, especially C.J. Stroud, who felt like, you know, up until the Cowboy game was in a bit of a slump, was not playing particularly well. Um, you know, this is a team that I thought could threaten to be the one seed uh, in the AFC, and they're clearly nowhere near that, and they kind of just got lucky to play Dallas because Dallas is in the middle of a self-implosion right now. So no shit they were going to beat up on the Cowboys. The Cowboys are um, – they, they might even have a shot at the number one overall pick with how their season's going. Their head coach is going to be fired. Who knows what's going on with Dallas. But the Texans, I don't know. Like, they're just in a weird spot. They definitely should beat the Titans. We know how bad the Titans are. So I feel like the, the Texans are really getting a break here where um, in the midst of their slump, in the midst of C.J. Stroud just not playing well in the mid part of the season – They really got a lucky break of playing a self-imploding Cowboys, then the Titans back-to-back weeks. So they better handle their business here because, like I said, they have been kind of disappointing. CJ particularly, I had him as an MVP candidate to start off the year. But like we've seen around the league, once your quarterback starts to lose his weapons, typically, unless your name isn't like Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen, 
Typically, you start losing your really good receivers. You start playing worse, and we've seen that happen with CJ with all their uh, injuries at receiver. But Nico Collins is back. Obviously, that made a big, big difference against Dallas. Um, give me Houston. But if they lose this one, we're going to have to have a big conversation about the Houston Texans because they're starting to worry me a little bit. Um, next up, another divisional matchup. The Patriots going to Miami to play the Dolphins. Give me the Dolphins here. They've looked really good with Tua back, and we knew that. Ever since you know Tua was injured, I always said, I don't really want to talk about the Dolphins too much because we know why they're bad. You know, there's not really, like, it's not rocket science. We know why the Dolphins are bad this year. It's because they don't have Tua. Ever since Tua's come back, they've actually looked pretty good. They beat a good Rams team. Rams, when healthy, are a playoff-level team. They beat that team. And then last week, um, they crushed the Raiders as well. So, you know, beating the Raiders isn't the most impressive of things. But they did beat them pretty soundly. Um, New England, I do give New England credit, especially since they brought in Drake May. They've actually, like, looked competent. They've looked like they... They at least have a shot to win a game when Drake May's in there, but I just think with how Miami's looking right now and them having a very, very outside chance of making the playoffs still, I still don't think it's uh, realistically possible just given the rest of their schedule. They still have to play like Green Bay, um, the Houston Texans. They still have to play, even though the Niners are struggling right now, they play the Niners later in the year, so... They still kind of have a rocky schedule. I said they're probably going to get to eight wins. I don't think that's good enough, but... They could control their own destiny if they get to 9 or 10 wins. They're probably in. So the Dolphins have a lot to play for right now at this point in the year, and that should mean they beat up on a bad New England Patriots team. So give me the Dolphins here. I think they're – it's obvious they're better than what their record says. They just dug themselves in a hole when Tua was hurt. Um, so next up we have – geez, another divisional one. This is just like the week of divisional matchups. Uh, we have Dallas at Washington. Washington should crush the Dallas Cowboys. Um, the Cowboys, like we said earlier, I don't want to really spend too much time. It's not even really fun trashing on the Cowboys nowadays because everyone knows how bad they were. It was more fun last year. That was like my shtick last year was being the big Cowboys hater. I don't even think I was a Cowboys hater. I think I was just the Cowboys truth teller that was vindicated in the playoff game against Green Bay. This year, it's not even really fun to hate on the Cowboys. Like I kind of feel bad for them. They're just such a disaster right now. Even before Dak got hurt, they sucked. Their defense is terrible. They have the worst run game in the NFL. This is the worst their line has been in a decade. It, there's not a whole lot to say here. In Washington, I get it. Jay Daniels did not look good in that game against the Eagles, but I think he was just kind of banged up. Um, they kept talking about like how his fingers were fucked up, and he got that injury against Carolina a couple weeks back. But he kind of got like a long week off since they played on Thursday night, so I think Jay Daniels is going to return back to form, especially against this putrid Swiss cheese defense that is the Dallas Cowboys. So give me the commanders there pretty soundedly. Another divisional one, uh, Minnesota going to Chicago to play the Bears. Give me the Vikings here. The Bears are, uh, I've already pounded the gavel in their season. We're already in talks now if Caleb Williams is a bust uh, because the Bears have a, a pretty good track record of fucking up top quarterback prospects. They did it with Trubisky's career. They did it with Justin Fields' career. They're well on their way to destroying Caleb Williams' football career in the National Football League. So I don't know. Like I said, the Bears, there's just too much to talk about with the Bears to really cover it in a prediction video. Like I'd have to go on really like a 15 to 20 minute rant to get all my thoughts off on the Bears. Again, if you want to see that, I have no problem making that where I could just in one place, list off all the things that made the Bears a disaster. Um, you know, yesterday I put out a video about the Jets, my final Jets rant. So if you guys want to see a similar video like that about the Bears, let me know. Um, but I have to take the Vikings here. They're just the supremely better team, better coached, better roster, better quarterback, better players, better everything. Give me the Vikings here. If the Vikings lose this, yikes. <laughs> uh, next up, we have the, the Kansas City Chiefs going to Carolina to play the Panthers. So we have arguably the best team in the league playing arguably the worst team in the league. We're not spending any time on this. Give me the Chiefs. Next up, another divisional matchup. This is literally like the divisional week. Like there's so many divisional matchups. Um, Denver at Vegas. I give Denver a lot of credit. I'm willing to admit when I was wrong. Uh, I was really, really critical of the Broncos. Um, I looked at their team last year. They were an eight-win team. 
and they got rid of a lot of their key guys like Russell Wilson, who, even though they threw him under the bus, he still had 26 touchdowns um, last year. They got rid of him. They got rid of Jerry Judy, which really, I think, crippled their receiver depth. They got rid of Justin Simmons, I thought was, thought was still really a high-end player. Like They got rid of some key guys, and that was when they were already a mediocre team. I didn't really trust Sean Payton. I thought Bo Nix, they overdrafted him. I was wrong. Like th This is a competent uh, operation right now. The Denver Broncos are a good football team right now, something I thought I would never say. But I have to give Sean Payton and Bo Nix their credit. Like... I would be a hater at this point if I just denied that they're doing good stuff right now. They're six and five. They just like shit on the Atlanta Falcons, thirty-eight to six. So I gotta rule with Denver here. I've been critical of them, but I'm willing to admit when I was wrong. Denver has an actual like logistic chance, uh, excuse me, legitimate chance of being a playoff team this year. So give me Denver. Um, another divisional one: Arizona at Seattle. This was one of the, the ones that was the toughest for me. I went back and forth on this one. I still think Seattle has a far better roster, like just overall better roster, but the best player is on the Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray, who I think you can – I don't know if he'd quite make it into my top five MVP candidates, but he should be on there for what he's done this year to have a bad Cardinals team atop the NFC West with really good stats. Kyler Murray is having an incredible year. So, you know – Logic, I think, would say go with Seattle. They have the better roster. I think they have the better coach. They are in Seattle this year. But I have to roll with my guy, Kyler. I think he's the best guy in this game. I think he's going to make the, the, the big plays. I just don't quite trust Geno in the big spots. You know, Even though they did beat the Niners last week, they deserve a lot of credit for that. I think it's the first time Geno has beaten the Niners. But I just don't know. I don't know. Um, i got to roll with my guy, Kyler. Give me the Cardinals. Um Speaking of the Niners, we next have them going to Green Bay to play the Packers. Um, this has been a pretty good rivalry. They've played a lot, a lot of big games over the past couple of years. This one in Green Bay. I got to roll with the Packers. The Niners right now, to me, I just don't know what to make of them. They're another team that probably deserves their own video with how their season is going. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to just ramble too much on this one because I really want to sit down and make a whole video about the Niners season as a whole. But... They have no momentum right now. They're just kind of like dead in the water. So give me the Green Bay Packers, especially at home. Um, next up, Sunday Night Football. We have the Eagles at L.A. to play the Rams. I think this will actually be a pretty good game. Um, this should be like a, a good back-and-forth game, but I'm going with the Eagles right now. They're red hot. They have all the momentum on their side. Jalen Hurts is playing elite football. Saquon Barkley I think is an actual MVP candidate, not only his stats, but also how he's just changed the dynamic of the Eagles' offense. Um, their receivers are playing really well. And now we're seeing the emergence of the Eagles' defense, which was always something I was waiting to see this year. And it feels like Vic Fangio has finally figured this unit out. Their defensive line is now starting to be very, very productive, especially the Georgia guys. The Eagles right now, they're just not a team I would want to play. They, they're playing their best football right now at the, you know, the, the back half of the season got off to a rocky start, but they are red hot right now. Give me the Eagles. Uh, and then we have Monday Night Football. The Baltimore Ravens going to L.A. Uh, to play the Chargers. Really good matchup. Really underrated matchup. And, of course, the big storyline in this one is Harbaugh versus Harbaugh. Um, we haven't seen that since the Super Bowl, you know, back in, uh, was that 2012, 2013. Um so that's going to be, I'm sure they're going to be talking about that a lot this week. It is kind of cool. It's going to be fun to see them two match up. I'm going with the Chargers here. Um, I, I just, I don't really know what to make of the Ravens. They're so inconsistent on offense. There's, there's weeks where they look like the best offense in the league and they look so dominant and it's like, how could you ever pick against that team? Then they'll have weeks like last week against my Steelers where they just look bad. And when you look at the Chargers, they share some similarities with the Steelers, in terms of how they play the game of football. Defensive-oriented, run game-oriented. So it's a tough one. I could really see this going either way, but I just I think this matchup favors the Chargers, especially with how bad the Ravens' defense has looked, how inconsistent their offense has been. Like I said earlier, I don't really trust Todd Munkin anymore at this point in time. Give me the Chargers in a big Monday night football game. Uh, and then we have six teams on a bye, Falcons, Bills, Bengals, uh, Jags, Saints, and Jets. 
Uh, so that's been it for my Week 12 predictions. Definitely let me know some of your favorite picks down in the comments. How's your NFL team doing this year? If you made it this far in the video, appreciate you listening. Please like and subscribe.